46 year old hospitalized with sepsis and septic shock following pyelonephritis okay so all these sepsis patients are at increased risk of coronary events during the hospitalization and immediate post post hospitalization time 12 dcg shows cardiac monitor because cardiac monitor showed that they have done a 12 dcg and uh, the troponin i is also positive question is asking patient has which type of myocardial infarction so this is not about non st elevation acute coronary syndrome or stemi well in that case without ecg i cannot go further but let me assume that there are stt changes suggestive of myocardial infarction and tropi kind of confirms that okay question is about which type of myocardial infarction it is type 1 2 3 4 so we know that we classify myocardial infarction into five types right so mi is classified into five types okay so it it need not always be because of the atheromatous plaque dysfunction or rupture if mi is because of atheromatous plaque rupture or plaque dysfunction in that case it is type 1 right so type 1 is where there is a primary abnormality inside the coronary arteries related to atheromatous changes type 1 there is atheromatous cad there is atheromatous cad so plaque rupture, rupture or dysfunction has led to patient developing mi okay so what is type 2 myocardial infarction in type 2 myocardial infarction there is a demand and supply mismatch demand and supply mismatch without the primary abnormality being atheromatous coronary artery disease so in in uh, atheromatous cad also there is a demand and supply mismatch that there is a normal demand supply is reduced but in type 2 what is happening is you don't have the atheromatous coronary artery disease it could be coronaries may be occluded because of an embolic phenomenon or there may be increased demand by the myocardium like the first thing that comes to my mind when i say type 2 is left ventricular hypertrophy so in left ventricular hypertrophy there is increased demand so coronaries may be normal they are not having atheromatous plaque even then you may develop myocardial infarction because left ventricular hypertrophy is there there is increased demand the supply is unable to match the demand right that is one example the other example i can think of is myocarditis myocarditis so in myocarditis there is tachycardia and myocardial cells are also dysfunctional and there is tachycardia right so there is tachycardia which is demanding more and more of blood supply it is not matched by the normal coronaries so patients can develop myocardial infarction right so all these post infectious mis particularly this covid may be related to this myocarditis and in that case it would become type 2 myocardial infarction right now what is type 3 myocardial infarction type 3 mi is where patient is dead of suspected mi right so patient is already dead the circumstances of death make you think that it could have been a case of myocardial infarction then we call it as type 3 now what is type 4 myocardial infarction type 4 myocardial infarction is related to the procedure of pci it is related to procedure of pci there are four, two types under this one is type 4a the other one is type 4b type 4a is where the patient has developed myocardial infarction as a consequence of pci so this is peri pci mi in the sense like either during PCI or immediately post PCI, patient has developed a complication in the form of MI. This is related to PCI, like development of a coronary artery aneurysm or rupture of a coronary artery aneurysm. Those are the reasons for myocardial infarction. Then we call it as type 4A. So it is related to directly related to the procedure of primary percutaneous intervention or procedure of angioplasty. Right? 4B is where there is stent thrombosis. So you have successfully handled the patient, you have done the PCI. Later the patient develops stent thrombosis. Then it is called as 4b so when things go wrong during the procedure and patients develop mi that is 4a and if patient develops after the procedure in the form of stent thrombosis that is 4b right and what is the type 5 myocardial infarction type 5 myocardial infarction is where patient has developed myocardial infarction as a consequence of cabg or cardiac surgery right so during cardiac surgery or cabg there is increased risk of uh, myocardial infarction because Coronary perfusion can be compromised. Patient may be spending a lot of time on the heart lung machine. So, those are all vulnerable periods. So, if patients develop a myocardial infarction at that point of time, it is called as type 5. Right? So, type 1, there is atheromatous coronary artery disease. Type 2, there is no atheromatous coronary artery disease. There is demand and supply mismatch. Right? And in type 3, patient is dead and circumstances make us think that it was a case of myocardial infarction. In type 4, there are 4A and 4B. 4A, the com it is a complication of the PCI as a procedure. 4b it is because of stent thrombosis and type 5 it is the complication of cabg or cardiac surgery right now let us go back to the option so here we are dealing with the patient with sepsis and septic shock following pyelonephritis and troponin i is positive okay well we don't have cag information but let me assume that we are not dealing with the case of atheromatous disease in that case it becomes type 2 because it is a case of sepsis and the increase the risk of myocardial infarction during sepsis 
may be because of this demand and supply mismatch right so in sepsis there is tachycardia sepsis is a high cardiac septic shock is particularly high cardiac output state right if the patient is hypovolemic and is in a high cardiac output state eventually myocardial perfusion will be impaired and patients can develop type 2 mi right so the right answer is type 2 also remember sometimes severe anemia can present with myocardial infection in that case also it is type 2 why i am saying this they have asked this point already severe mi in a patient with severe anemia what kind of myocardial infection it is it is type 2 myocardial infection in that question that also mentioned that the coronary angiogram turned out to be normal 